Hello, everybody. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. I am Hoda Mer, founder and CEO of Stock Card. And today I have a interesting and new way of doing my office hours. Every week I offer this research jam office hour to our new users who join the stock card platform. But this week I started change my model and uh, going live to do this office hours live on Twitter on YouTube and LinkedIn and on Facebook. We have a Facebook group there. Uh, I hope you join me and uh, ask questions and participate in this conversation. Usually it's an office hour, so everybody can participate in the conversation. Today it's live. So let's see if live model works or not. Um, what planned? What I have planned for today is sharing three best ways that you can slice and dice or filter the stock market for long-term investors. And the reason I want to do this uh, today with you is it's one of my favorite things to do these days because the stock market is down significantly this year. A lot of the good stocks and ETFs that are our uh, watch list or we've been watching were down uh, significantly. It is one of the best times to create those watch lists and start investing in the stock market, especially for the long term. If it was a normal stock market, you find good stocks and good ETFs to invest in uh, and invest in it. Of course, for the long term, you're going to have good return. But if you invest at the time when the market is significantly down, like the situation in 2022, you're basically turbocharging uh, the um, the return of your portfolio. So that's why it's one of my favorite things to do these days is spending time on the uh, filters and the screeners on a different platforms, specifically on the stock card. And I want to share with you three best filters or three best ways to slice and dice the stock market or filter the stock market uh, for those long-term investors in the community. If you're watching live or if you're watching later on at a later time, uh, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section, share your favorite screener, uh, or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask as we go along. All right, without further ado, let's get started. You can, by the way, if you're watching live with me or if you're watching at a later time, you can obviously visit uh, stockcard.io and go to the tool section in the screener section, either a stock screener or ETF screener, and do this along with me and get a copy of those screeners that I'm creating for yourself as well. Um, all right, so let's get started. The number for the first screener uh, that I want to share with you, it's one of my favorite these days. And I have to say, I am fascinated and obsessed with this concept, fascinated and obsessed with this concept. And it's the concept I uh, came to learn from uh, Chris Meyer, uh, who's a fund manager and an author. Um, I have his uh, Twitter page uh, loading up right here for you, um, Chris W. Meyer, and I put a link to his profile. And this guy, Chris, wrote a book about hundred baggers. Um, he's the author of a book called Hunter Baggers, and he re repeated several um, research or work that previously did other fund managers or other researchers in the stock market, figuring out the common characteristics of co stocks that have created at least 100x return for their investors. And of course, it's not an easy task to do and find 100 baggers, but there are common characteristics between um, different companies and different stocks uh, that you could filter for. And that gives you a starting point, a starting point or a starting watch list to find those 100 baggers uh, for your investment. So it is by no means when we get to the screener and we put the criteria into the screener, the result doesn't guarantee that this is all the hunter baggers that you can find. But of course, it's a much better starting point rather than you go and try to randomly pick a stonks and try to figure out which one is going to be a hunter bagger or not, or you know, even 50 bagger or even 60 bagger or even a 200 bagger. So that's why I really love this screener. I'm obsessed, as I said to you, with this screener these days. And that's because the, the methodology that 
Chris Myers introduced makes the life of us long-term investors so much easier, gives us a starting point uh, to research, find a watch list, a research of stocks that allows us to achieve that hundred bagger um, uh, portfolio or hundred packer picks that we would want to hold in our long-term portfolio. So for the purpose of this exercise, of course, I'm using uh, a stock card platform. And if you're not familiar with our screener tool, which I highly recommend you should take a look is that under the tools, you could have to go to stock screener here, or you could go to ETF screeners. And let me make this a little bit bigger uh, so that you could really see it. So under the tools, um, you could use stock screener and ETF screener. And uh, today we'll use the stock screener two times and I'll give you two different um, stock uh, filters or save the screeners for long term. And I will use the ETF screener one time at the end and I'll give you a list of ETFs that uh, I believe are a really good starting point for those long term ETF holdings in your portfolio. By the way, if you're watching live, Please put a comment uh, uh, on, on YouTube, on or Twitter, or LinkedIn. Share your thoughts and ideas. And if you have any questions, obviously, please do share them. I'll get to those questions um, uh, right in the middle, sometime in the middle, or maybe towards the end. And if you're joining it at the later time after we're live stream, you can always put comments and I'll get to those questions as well. So let's get into the possible 100x baggers, companies or stocks that have common characteristics with historical hunter baggers based on Chris Meyer's book, Hunter Bagger book, um, so that we can create a common a watch list, a starting watch list for stocks to, to add to our portfolio. All right, let's get started. So um, there are, based on Chris Meyer's book, and obviously Chris um, has done this work recently but there are a lot of other researchers or investors or fund managers in the past that have done similar work. And what was very interesting between the work of Chris Meyer and a few other ones is that most of the common characteristics are common across these researchers. So this gives us confidence that if we filter the universe of universe of the stocks in the stock market, based on those common characteristics of hunter bagger stocks, most likely we have a much better list uh, or starting point compared to if we were just kind of getting tips and ideas, random tips and ideas, one-offs here and there from our friends or on social media. So I like the systematic approach of using the screener to give me that head start, that starting point to find my hunter bagger stocks. All right. So, um, if you go on a stocks, a stock cards, a screener tool, as I was telling you here, and click on uh, stock screeners. It takes you to this the screener page, and then you could start a screening right off the bat. I have hundreds and hundreds of screeners on the left hand side on my account, so I'm demoing out of my account. You may have some here, or if you don't have here, uh, the beauty of it is you could create them, and then you can always go back to that screener. So you could click on the start screener, and uh, I've already done that to save us a little bit of time. I named it possible 100x baggers. So what, what are common characteristics of stocks that have the potential to be 100 baggers? Number one thing, this is not necessarily a common characteristics, but this is what I really like to do. I usually go with more common stock exchanges, NYC and NASDAQ. Doesn't mean that there's no 100 baggers in other stock exchanges, but you know, when it comes to investing in hunter baggers, you do want to start with that companies that have solid base and some they're, they're, they're listed on the right stock exchanges, at least in the United States. So I filter it out by NASDAQ and NYC. You can obviously filter it by other, other um, exchanges if you want, or include the um, other or like OTCMs uh, over the counter uh, stock exchanges into your research. Something that is very common between a, a hunter baggers across Chris Meyer's research and many other uh, researchers I've recently uh, looked into is that in order to 100x your investment return, you need to start from companies that are small. That doesn't mean that if you have a company that has like $10 billion market cap or a $50 billion market cap or even $100 billion market cap, it cannot get to 100x 
uh, or Hunter Bagger status, it's just it's more difficult. If you deal with a company that is 50 million or 100 million in market capitalization, there is room <laughs> to grow that market cap to make make that company become much much bigger so that's why the first characteristics that we filter for in order to find the hunter bagger stocks for the long term is start from a small cap or medium cap i chose 300 million all the way to 10 billion dollar uh, market cap companies you could play with your own version maybe even include 50 million to 300 million that's up to you and this is my starting point but for sure the one of the common characteristics between hundred bagger stocks out there is that they are all starting from being a small company and then there's room for them to grow to become much bigger companies. The second ca common characteristics between hundred baggers is these companies have high growth potential. And if you're familiar by, with the stock art platform, um, and let me open one here and maybe we can go to a company like, um, let's say, uh, Tesla. Uh, everyone's favorite um, uh, uh, EV stock. And I'll, I'll, I'll get back to Tesla in a second. And I want to show you what this growth potential is. Uh, but it basically shows which markets and sectors and industries and core markets that company is operating in. And what is the growth potential? What is the growth rate of those market sectors and industries and stuff? Uh, core markets that that company is operating in in the next three to five years. And it's a really good place to start finding your hunter bagger. Why? Because if a company like Tesla, regardless of what you think about the founder, whether, regardless of what you think about the operation of the company, just think about its growth potential. It, it is operating in, in markets, sectors, industries and core markets that are growing rapidly. And Warren Buffett has a very favorite um, uh, saying that I really like and says, the sector or the industry puts the wind behind the back of the company. And you really want to filter when it comes to hundred baggers, you do want to filter for companies that have that high growth potential or that push from the uh, markets and sectors and core markets that is operating in, because even if it doesn't do that, a stock or that company don't do well operationally one or two years or one or two quarters, the growth, the sheer volume of growth rate or demand in the market would push the stock forward. So it is paramount. It's been common uh, characteristics between a lot of hunter bagger companies in Chris Meyer's study that these companies are operate in those rapidly growing sectors and markets. So for something like Tesla operates in nine sectors in the core markets, and of those nine, seven are very rapidly um, sectors or core markets. Electric vehicles, EVs growing 22% per year electric trucks, 43%, digital currency because of their focus on digital currency, obviously, autonomous vehicles or self-driving, a big push for, for a company or Tesla. And I'm only using Tesla as an example. You may agree or may not disagree with its growth potential, but regardless of what is what's happening to the company, filter or a screen based on that growth potential, that push from the market behind the company's, uh, behind the company's operation, and you're going to get a much, much better result. So I go back to my screener. We are screening for hunter baggers as our long term uh, screener. And I'm focusing on companies that have high, high growth potential. So this rep this represents that growth potential bucket that I was showing you on, on the Tesla stock card. And every stock card has that growth potential bucket. So we're now narrowing down our focus on companies that are small or medium size and have really high growth potential based on the markets they're operating in. The third common characteristics between companies that have historically led to 100x return is their sales growth. You cannot, unless you get lucky, unless it's a GME case, GameStop, or it's the case of a penny stock gets pumped and dumped and things like that, or just there's some phenomenon happening in the market. But for company, unless those situations, aside from those situations, you would only become a hunter bagger or a stock or a company that you truly, you're truly able to sell 
you're truly able to generate revenue. So there is no hunter bagger company out there that was able to consistently, that wasn't able to consistently grow its revenue. So it is so important to filter out for companies that have history of a solid sales track record. So that is the third common characteristic. And if I go back to Tesla, we're using this as an example. Tesla has really a strong financial status. And if I click on that a strong financial status, by the way, this applies to any company or stock card that you use on stock card platform is that it, we use this revenue track record or revenue potential, the data that comes to stock card as a way to uh, calculate or measure whether the company sales growth is growing. And uh, for example, in this filter we're doing, Tesla is not qualifying right now because of its recent um, quarterly revenue. So it has had slowed down its growth rate. So in this filter we're creating, Tesla accidentally won't fit. And that might be very interesting considering this market cap now, maybe it's never going to get to that 100x bagger. But again, that's not the that's not the question. The question is how do we systematically filter the universe of a stock market to companies that have potential to create hunter bag to become hunter baggers? So that is another common characteristics. The next common characteristic, which is quite important, is cash availability. And what is cash availability? If you want to become a hunter bagger, you need to grow your operation, you need to invest in your operation, you need to have the money, the cash to invest in your company. And of course, there might be companies that may, may be able to go borrow in the market or have ways to issue new shares to raise new capital to be able to do it. But fundamentally, you need to look for companies that have that cash, have a strong balance sheet to invest in the future of the company in order to become a hunter bagger. So that's why one of the uh, most important common characteristics between hunter bagger potential stocks is that cash availability, not having any cash concern in uh, their balance sheet. And again, if I go back to Tesla, this cash availability, Tesla is an example here, by the way. If I go back to Tesla, that uh, cash availability is associated with the company's ability to generate free cash flow and its status of its cash versus its debt. So we on the stock card, as you know, if you're using a stock card, we compare a level of cash a company has with the level of debt a company has, and we give it a good or bad or neutral score. And then if the company also consistently generates free cash flow, that's another another way we we present data to you on our platform. So that on that screener that we were just talking about, cash availability represents that those lines, the free cash flow and cash versus debt status of that company. So this is one more very common characteristic between companies that have been able to generate hundred baggers in the past. And we're using that as a way to filter the stock market to get to the list of possible hunter baggers in the future. And then the last screener that we would use for our possible hunter bagger or screener uh, or watch list criteria is management effectiveness. And this one, I was very surprised when I was reading Chris Meyer's research. I, it was not really on my radar in a lot of my personal research in the past. And maybe it's the same for you guys. And what Chris said in his book was that um, companies that have been able to achieve the hunter bagger status historically have been able to generate high return on equity or high return on their invested capital. And if you're not familiar with these terms, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll just explain them quickly. Basically, what it, what these, these figures or these metrics say about a company <clears throat> is that historically, from every dollar that that company invested in its operation, how much it's been able to generate in earnings. So that's just basically dollar in whether a company has been able to generate dollar out, right? So that's sort of a return on capital. And we are obviously in the growth type of investing. We're very familiar with companies that don't generate any earnings. But if you look at history of companies like Apple, companies like Amazon, <clears throat> the real 
consistent hundred baggers. Give me a second to drink. <coughs> Of drinking Earl Grey tea, by the way. Hopefully, you're drinking something very nice too. It's my favorite drink uh, in the middle of the day and helps me get going and get the caffeine. Mm. Thank you. So, yeah, if you look at the companies like Apple or Amazon, um, these are consistent hunter bangers in the past decade or so. What has happened to them is that they've been able to generate that return on equity, return on asset, or return on invested capital um, uh, consistently. And what it does is that when investors look at those return on equities, return on assets, and return on invested capital, and see they are growing in a consistent way, they value that company higher. They value that company. So the multiplier of that company goes high. So that's why it's so important when you're filtering for hunter baggers in a systematic way, you do want to look for companies that have that consistent history of increasing return on their assets, on their equities, and on their invested capital, because the market, the algorithms, the other investors value those companies higher. They get higher multipliers. A very, very good example of that, of that kind of company, which I was very surprised by recently is MasterCard. So if you look at a company like MasterCard ticker MA, and if you look at its return on equity in the, in the recent few years, you see the company has been just knocking it out of the park with 100% or plus return on equity. And so I'm going to show it to you here under the management effectiveness on the stock card. You could see this company's solid return on asset, solid return on uh, equity. Look at that. Last fiscal quarter is 137%. In two fiscal quarter, positive. Uh, compared to its peer, uh, annual return on equity growth, last fiscal quarter year is 126. Two fiscal quarters ago, 104 three fiscal years ago, 143. So this company is just generating enough return on asset, return on equity in a consistent way that investors are willing to pay higher valuations for that company. And that's why it is so important to be able to screen the stock market based on that high management effectiveness, which is the combination of return on assets, return on equity, return on investor capital, in order to find your hunter baggers. So to recap, we're using Chris Meyer's 100X or 100 bagger stock methodology to create a screener, a starting point, a watch list for possible hunter baggers in the future. And uh, what we're using is we're on the stock screener and stock card. We're using market cap, growth potential, sales growth, balance sheet, cash availability versus liabilities, and management effectiveness. That ability to generate return on equity or return on asset on a company as main criteria to create our hunter baggers. So if I click apply and save this, this screen that I've created, we're gonna get the list of hunter bagger uh, stocks in our watch list. And as you see, as of today, there are 26 stocks, only 26 stocks that qualify for that possible hunter bagger stock status. And they by no, no means it means that these are the only stocks, but at least it's a very systematic approach for you, the stock market investors, to be able to narrow down your research to get the list of companies that could potentially create 100x return for your portfolios. So what I would do is that if I were you, and I would do this for myself, is that I would research these companies one by one in the next few days and be look for the companies that truly have that potential to create hunter baggers. A very good one, for example, that just come across here is Popmatic. Popmatic is just one of those companies that a lot of um, investors have been talking about and truly have that 
potential to become a hundred bagger uh, from my point of view. Of course, you would want to look at who is the manager, who is the CEO, what is their track record? There's a few other, do they have a moat or competitive advantage in the market? There's things, there's qualitative things that you would want to research. That's why this is just the starting point, but it is truly a really good starting point to find the companies that could create a hundred bagger return in the future. And by the way, one thing I want, I want to tell you is that I've, I've created this, I've saved this. This would stay as your, as your potential possible hunter bagger uh, watch list forever. As long as you keep this criteria and save that in your account, which is what I do personally in my own account, you will always have this dynamic list of stocks that meet those criteria and our platform refreshes it every night. So tomorrow you may come back and there's only six stocks fit this criteria or maybe five stocks or maybe 260 stocks would fit. So it's a dynamic place to constantly come back and get new ideas. What I would do is I would copy this uh, URL for you and I put it in the comments. If you're watching now, you could get the comments. Uh, you could get to that list and basically copy this um, portfolio, this this list that I just gave you um, uh, for yourself, and have a copy of that in your own portfolio. Or uh, if you're looking at it at a later time, again, go back to the comments comment section and get that copy of that URL of this screen I, I created, and you can make a copy of that in your own portfolio. All right. So uh, that was number one. <laughs> Number one way to slice and dice the stock market to get the list of uh, stocks that are a good fit for long term portfolio and long term investor. And we use Chris Meyer's Hunter Bagger uh, methodology to get to that list. Talking about Hunter Baggers, before we move to the next screener that I want to share with you, I want to tell you about a stock cards uh, fundraising. So we truly believe a stock card as a company, as a platform, is a hundred bagger or maybe even more um, a startup out there in the financial technology sector. And that's why we created this fundraising campaign or page on Republic. And we want you to be part of our investment investor community. So if you look at the quality of the uh, stock cards management team, look at its historical return in terms of growth, in terms of revenue growth, you see some of those common characteristics that we've been talking about in some of the public traded companies. Of course, this is a startup much more riskier than a lot of other publicly traded company. But if you truly believe and look for hundred bagger companies, we really hope you would uh, take a look at a stock card. And in, if you haven't done so yet, I would give a link to that uh, fundraising page on Republic. It's uh, republic.com backslash the stock card. And hopefully we will have you as an investor in our journey to become a, a hundred bagger or even more return on investment for our investors in the future. So once again, republic.com backslash the stock card. And uh, please visit it and see if you would want to join us as an investor. I sure hope you do so. Now let's go back to our screeners. I told you about the Hunter Bagger story and how to create a screener that gives you Hunter Bagger stocks. This second screener is about stocks that are hitting 52 week low solid stocks that are hitting 52 week low. And I am, this is another, I told you at the beginning that these days I spent significant amount of time on the stock cards and screener to look for those future long-term investments that I would want to hold in my own personal portfolio. And this is another way that I would slice and dice the market uh, to find those potential stocks. And it's a very, very interesting one. Let's talk about that. Uh, in the stock, in the sort of the co current stock market situation, what is happening is that really solid companies, really solid companies, companies with strong balance sheet, 
high return on investment, high return on equity, high return on assets, and lots of cash availability and low amount of debt that are hitting 52-week low or lower sort of a status in terms of price. That what it tells me is that we now have this unique opportunity, very, very unique opportunity to find companies that have solid balance sheets, solid status, solid operation. But just because of the market status and market, what it is, what it is right now, they're hitting their 52 week low or lower. It doesn't mean that they're not going to go lower than this current price, because who knows what's going to happen in the stock market in the short term. But at least it's a much better starting point for a lot of us long-term investors to invest those companies that have solid operation and solid balance sheets, solid history of return on assets, return on equity, return on investor capital, but at a much better price. And we've all heard in the market, the, one of the ways to sort of the classic joke or classic advice to everybody is buy low, sell high. And I know it's sort of like, it's been used so much that it doesn't mean anything, but it's truly this the screener allows us to find those companies that have solid operations, solid results, solid balance sheets, solid track record. It's just happened to be hitting their lower prices status these days. So again, I'm using, if you remember, I told you at the beginning, if you were watching on a stock card, you could go under tools and then look for stock screeners. I have tons of screeners created for myself. You can create yours. So for this solid stocks hitting 52 week low, this is the criteria that I've used that I would highly recommend you would use it too. So one thing on a stock card that you may or may not know is that in this theme section, in this sector keyword section of our screener, you could type in anything in common language. You could put AI, EVs, you put a lot. We, we, we have almost 1,500 different themes, which include sectors, industries, and core markets, but also interesting themes like the stocks that are near 52-week low or lower, or stocks that are um, near 52-week high and higher, or stocks that have improving margins. There's like a lot of interesting themes in there. And by the way, if you don't know where to get those themes, it's under our trending. So if you go on, on the trending tool and click on themes, you could get the list of all the themes that are available on a stock card platform for you to figure them out. Um, obviously, please take a look at it later on. For the purpose of this exercise, I'm using this theme. Today's near 52-week low or lower. What it does is that it goes through all the stocks that are listed in the stock market today and find the ones that are hitting 50 within the 5% vicinity of their 52 week low. So that's by itself is a good screener. But what I want to add is that filter out all the companies that don't have solid balance sheet, don't have solid operations, don't have solid track record of creating value for their shareholders. So I'm focusing on, I'm removing sort of like a micro caps and small caps. That's not my investment style. You could keep these in your own version. I am adding high growth potential. And if you remember, high growth potential represents that bucket on a stock card, that bucket of, um, let's go back up, of that bucket of information on every stock card that tells you which sectors, markets, and uh, core markets this company operates in. And it would basically gives you this ability to filter for companies or stocks that have that push of the market, push of the sector, push of the core markets that they're operating. So something like MasterCard, which is a company we were looking at it just a few minutes ago, has the push of 23% growth in digital payments, 11% annual growth in digital currencies. Um, 6% growth in point of sale um, market, 11% growth in peer-to-peer -peer payment market, it all, or 26, 27% growth in, in mobile payment. So you do want, when, you, when it comes to investing in companies that are for the long term, just the same as the previous screener, we do want to focus on companies that have that high growth potential, that push up the market, that win, as, Mark, as Warren Buffett says, win behind their back. So I would put high growth potential filter. And the other two is cash availability and management effectiveness. 
So you're looking at companies. So think about it. It's so interesting. You're filtering the universe of the stocks based on the companies that are hitting 52 week low or lower, but have really high growth potential and have no cash problem, have solid, solid balance sheet. Their cash that is available to them compared to the liabilities that they have and the free cash flow that generate is solid, right? And then the last one is have high management effectiveness. So if you've missed the discussion that I just had about five minutes ago about management effectiveness, please pause and go back. I mean, not on the live, but on the recording, go back and listen to that portion. But we're looking for companies that have history, track record of creating return on every dollar they've invested, every dollar they invested. So these are not by no means sort of gross stories or companies that are only growing based on the story that is being told about them in the market. These are companies that have historically have had solid track record in return for their shareholders. But it just happened to because of the market situation, because what's happening in the market, or maybe some short term news about them, they're hitting their 52 week lower and lower. And I love that. This is the classic example of buying low, right? So I've I've already created this. I we, you could save and apply it and see and get that list of the stocks that would hit those um, those criteria. And as you see, it's basically refiltering that results. But as you can see, is that today only seven stocks you see here, only seven stocks are um, are meeting this criteria that we created. And so interesting of. Thousands of thousands of companies, thousands of thousands of companies listed in the stock market. Only seven today might be a good investment for your long term. And these, and they may, may not even be, right? <laughs> they may not even be um, the right choice. But if you look at it, the names that uh, meet, meet uh, sort of my eyes or catch my eye is probably something like Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM. It's probably being impacted by China news and things like that, but it's the world supplier of chips, you know, the electronic chips that goes into your like phones and computers and stuff. So time and semiconductor is one of those companies has had history of return, solid return, solid balance sheet, tons of cash in the markets that in the long run, I'm not talking about cyclicality of the uh, semiconductors. I'm talking about the long term has the potential to, has that push of the market behind it, and it just happened to be hitting that um, uh, near or 52 week low or lower. So again, this is a salt, this is a dynamic screener. You could copy this and save it in your uh, own account on Stockard. And what it does is that every night, at the middle of the night, it gets, refreshed by our platform and then you could always come back to this stock this screener and get a new list of companies that are fitting hitting 52 week low or lower and have solid balance sheet and have a strong history or track record of uh creating return for return for their uh for their uh, investors so again i'm going to copy paste and put this in the comment section. I believe it will be available on YouTube. If you're watching on LinkedIn or Twitter, you may not see it, but I will put it in the show notes on YouTube and you can always go back to it at, at a later time. So here it is in the comment section. And now we talked about two screeners. We talked about the stocks that have potential for generating 100x return for you in the long run. Uh, we talked about a stock card being a startup that can create that higher return, 100x, 100x return or even more for you if you decide to invest in a stock card on Republic. We're raising um, an investment round and we do love you to join us as an investor on republic.com backslash stock card. And then we also talked about uh, a list of stocks or a filter of a stock that are solid in terms of their operation and in terms of their track record, but happen to 
hit 52 week low uh, price because of some short term market situation. So I only have one more uh, screener to share with you in Barony that I kept the best for the last. And it's for those who actually invest in ETFs, exchange traded funds, which is one of the best ways to invest in the stock market for the long run. Get a sip of my tea and let's get started. So the last screener is ETFs worth buying for the long run. And this is one of the ways to slice the stock market in a very interesting way, because if you're investing in ETFs, you're obviously getting a basket of stocks. Every ETF is an exchange traded fund, is a basket of stocks. So you get that diversified or diversification by investing those in those ETFs. But also we're going to use these solid uh, screeners that we have available to really narrow down the list of exchange traded funds to a small list of ETFs that are truly worth your money and worth a spot in your portfolio. So it, this is an interesting one because and there is a lot of methodologies out there to evaluate ETF uh, stocks and screen the stocks, but there's not a lot of talk about ETFs out there. So that's why I'm super excited. Again, if you're not familiar with a stock card a screener on a stock card under the tools, you could go to the uh, ETF screeners and it would give you a list of uh, a tool for you to can you can you can narrow down the universe of ETFs to whatever you want. And then that's what I'm using today to find ETFs that are worth buying in your portfolio as a long term watch list for your investments. So here it is. This is going to be a little bit interesting one, as I said, because there's not a lot of methodologies out there to filter down ETF. So we have to go through it together. I will get back to this theme that I have here, technology, in a second. But let's first talk about what is a good ETF, right? If you're not familiar with ETFs, there are some common characteristics between good ETFs. ETFs are managed by a fund manager, so you definitely want to invest in an ETF that at least has some tenure, right? The fund manager has had a few months or a few years with that ETF to be able to run it, to be able to run its operation, to prove its sort of a strategy. So when I want to invest in ETF, I do want to invest in, in ETFs that have at least one to five years of, at least one year of operation. So here, for the sake of this exercise, I looked at uh, ETFs, exchange traded funds that have at least one year of history, right? It's sort of like you don't really want to invest in baby, <laughs> baby ETFs, right? You want to give that fund manager some time to prove their strategy. The second one is just like in stocks, you know, have you heard this term? I believe um, uh, David Garner from uh, the founder of the Multifool uses it and says things that have momentum continue to have momentum in the stock market, right? So a stock that keeps, if a solid a stock or a solid company that has been able to overperform the market, unless there are some critical things happen, it will continue its momentum. So I'm going with that same, that same philosophy and I'm looking at ETFs that have been able to un, overperform the market in, history, in, in, in their history. So I am really counting on that the ETF that is well run and has this hot, solid momentum of overperforming the average return of the market, like S and P 500, right? That's one return. That's one characteristic. You do want to invest in funds that are able and proven to be able to overperform the market when it comes to ETFs, screening or filtering for ETFs. There's tons of other filters you could use. I don't really want to use them for this exercise. The four or six that I really want to talk about is if, when it comes to ETFs, what matters is very important is the expense. How much you're compensating that fund manager for the return that they're creating for you. So you're looking for companies with low expense ratio, as ETFs with low expense ratio. And that means that you're not paying the fund manager a significant amount of money. And that means over the years, you're basically how your return is going to be closer to the return of that exchange traded fund. Same is the tax impact. What's important for ETFs is that when um, they basically sell a portion of their ETF 
or their holdings. It's an event that generates a capital gain tax for that ETF, right? So that would mean the fund, it doesn't have an impact on your portfolio, but that means the fund has to muster up the cash to be able to pay for that capital gain. And um, there's other, obviously, um, dividends and stuff, things like that. There's the overall tax impact of that ETF, you want it to be low. So if you want to invest in ETFs for the long term, you really want to make sure it's a, an ETF with low expense ratio, low cost, and an ETF with low tax impact. So it has low cost related to paying taxes for managing its fund. Uh, the other very two important uh, criteria is how risky that ETF is. Because if you are investing in ETF, you really don't want to have a fund manager for the long run. A fund manager is being quite risky with their portfolio because you could be risky with your own portfolio, right? If you are an individual investor, you want to take risky behavior, you invest in uh, success stories, the story driven stocks, or maybe you do something else, uh, invest in cryptocurrencies, invest in startups. You don't really want your exchange traded fund to be a source of your risk. Yeah, you're investing in ETFs because you want to be able to diversify, you want to be able to get that broad exposure to the market. So that's why I would, I would choose for the long run ETFs that have low performance risk, low qualitative risk. And then, you know, I allowed some moderate because like someone like some of the fund managers who know what they're doing, they might be a little bit more risky with their behavior. They may take some of the risks, but you don't want to really those high, high risk leverage ETFs, the ones that borrow a significant amount of money, short a stock market. That's not, obviously those are good investment strategies for other things, but for the purpose of finding long-term good ETFs to hold in your portfolio, these are really important factors. And then the last uh, two criteria I use for long-term ETF screening is the valuation of that ETF. Evaluation of ETF, it's basically the aggregated valuation of the funds and the stocks is in that ETF. So if the funds and the stocks in that ETF are undervalued or the amount of the money that, that is invested in that company, the net asset value of that ETF is lower than the market valuation of the companies it is invested in. So let me say it again. The aggregated value of the assets invested in that ETF is lower of the value of the combined value of the, the constituent, the ETF, the stocks and ETFs in that ETF, it means that it's undervalued, right? Um, or if it's if, if if it's forecasted that way as well, it means it's undervalued. So I am truly filtering out for ETFs that have really high growth potential, have performance history of perform overperforming the market, low risk low qualitative risk, low cost, low tax impact, and also undervalued. It is truly one of the best ways to screen for ETFs, especially in the current market, because you're going to get the best of the best. And then obviously I could have stopped here and just see what is the result of this ETF, but I took one step further and I just narrowed down the entire universe of the exchange rate of funds for funds that are focusing on technology theme. And I've told you about on a stock card, we have 1500 different themes and sectors and core markets that we operate in that we can use to filter out the universe of the stocks and ETFs. And here I'm focusing on technology. I could remove this and I believe without even filtering out for the technology uh, sector, you would already get a very good list, but I like to add the technology. You could totally again, remove it. And then if I basically apply and save this, this filter, it, the, the interesting is that only four, only four ETFs that are operating in tech sector and have meet all of these criteria that we've been talking about in the last 10 minutes or so, meet the criteria and are potentially worth a spot in your portfolio. And uh, obviously, they're all interesting, interesting ETFs. I do highly recommend you use this starting point to research these ETFs and see whether they have a point, they have a spot in your portfolio. But the, for the sake of this exercise, because we talked about it, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that technology. You see here, I have that technology filter that I was telling you about. I remove the technology filter and see 
boom, 46, right? So we 10 exit the list of stocks, uh, list of ETFs. So you could potentially basically use this list um, for ETFs that are worth buying for the long term um, in your research. So what I'm going to do is just the same as every other ones. I'm going to save this um, filter for you. And if I'm, if you are watching on YouTube, um, it's going to appear in your in your comment section. And if you're not watching on YouTube, please head on to YouTube and see the live stream there. And I'll give you the URL of this filter that I've just created. Uh, this is screener that I've just created. So these are ETFs. These are ETFs worth uh, buying for the long term, right? Buying for the long term. So I'll put it in the comment section. I put it in the show notes. And the, what it what it does is that, as I was telling you before, is that these dynamic these the screeners are dynamics, dynamic, meaning that they're not going to go away as long as I I created this one, right? As long as I would keep this um, in my account, which I plan to do, as you see, I have tons of each uh, uh, tons of screeners. Uh, as long as I keep it, you will have access to it. If you click on that link, you will always be able to get that screener. By the way, if you want to create a copy of it, just create, click on that link, and then you can copy. You can save that screener in your own account on the stock card, and you don't even need me anymore. So I changed the name of this thing because we changed, we removed the tax sector, right? So ETF force buying in the long run uh, for the long term, basically, right? That was a better name for the long term. And uh, that is the last screener that we talked today or we discussed today. Let me recap. Today, I wanted to tell you about five, uh, three different ways to slice and dice the stock market to get companies or funds that are worth buying uh, or worth a spot in your portfolio. The first one was possible hundred baggers. We went through the methodology. We talked about how I came up with these criteria based on Chris Myers' hundred baggers uh, book. And we came down to a list of 26 stocks that could be possible hundred baggers and could have a spot in your portfolio. The second screener was about solid stocks with solid track record in terms of balance sheet, in terms of return on assets and equities and historical performance and their growth potential that are for some short term reason that are hitting their 52 week low or lower status. So that is truly classic example of buying, buying low and selling high or hopefully never selling buying low situation. That was the second screener we created today together. And then the third screener was an ETF screener. And we really discussed the criteria that you would use in order to pick ETFs that have that track record and that have those characteristics that are worth a spot in your portfolio. Those characteristics are things like expense ratio, tax impact. Those are the important characteristics when you look at ETFs that are worth buying. And then the last thing I want to tell you, I've been telling you about a stock cards fundraising campaign. As you know, a stock card platform, uh, you may or may not know, we're raising a uh, fundraising campaign on Republic. And what it does is that it allows you, our community, our users, to be able to become an investor in a stock card. And our goal in the in in for creating the company is to create a hundred bagger startup, or hopefully a lot more return for our um, for our uh, investors. We do have those common characteristics we were just talking about. We have have a solid traction on our revenue, on our sales growth, in terms of number of users. So we do believe we are a hundred bagger, a potential hundred bagger startup. There's a lot more on republic.com backslash stock card. If you're interested to invest in the stock card, um, you can ask questions in the discussion section. You could contact me at ahoda at stockcard.io if you have any questions. And I truly hope you be part of our investor community. So let me see, let me stop there and see if there is any question from uh, or comments or ideas from people who are watching live, a few people who are watching live, please share your comments. If you're on YouTube, that would be a place to share. 
Um, and if there is no question or no comments, I appreciate you spending a portion of your day with us. Uh, it's been fun to explore these three different screeners to slice and dice the market for the, for the long term. And I hope to see you in the future live streams. Thank you very much for your time and see you soon.